Out in the vast, silent theater of the cosmos, there are objects of incredible power and mystery. We see the brilliant light of distant suns and the soft glow of swirling nebulae, but some of the universe's most fascinating secrets are hidden in darkness. They are the ghosts of long-dead giant stars. These are not just empty spaces. They are cosmic relics of immense density and energy. We call them neutron stars. They are the collapsed cores of stars that were once many times more massive than our own sun. When these giants reached the end of their lives, they didn't just fade away. They exploded in a final glorious burst of light known as a supernova, leaving behind a tiny spinning heart. This remnant is a city-sized sphere of matter so dense that a single teaspoon of it would weigh billions of tons here on Earth. Imagine that for a moment. All the cars, buildings, and people in a major city crush down into a space smaller than a sugar cube. That is the reality of a neutron star. They are so compact, so heavy, that they warp the very fabric of space-time around them. They are cosmic lighthouses, spinning hundreds of times per second and sweeping beams of radiation across the galaxy. So what are we really talking about when we imagine the atmosphere of a neutron star? It is not like the air we breathe on Earth with gentle breezes and fluffy white clouds. The atmosphere of a neutron star is a thin, superheated plasma, just a few centimeters thick. It is a layer of matter held captive by an incredible gravitational pull. The surface of a young neutron star can be millions of degrees Celsius, far hotter than the core of our sun. This intense heat keeps the surface material in a gaseous plasma state, a sea of charged particles simmering in extreme energy. The gravity on a neutron star surface is about 200 billion times stronger than on Earth. If you could stand there, you would be instantly crushed into a paste of subatomic particles. This is the very place we want to explore not with spaceships or rovers, but with our imagination, guided by the laws of science. We want to ask a bold question. Could something live here? Life as we know it is built from complex molecules like DNA and proteins, which would be torn apart by the heat and radiation of a neutron star. But what if life isn't limited to the forms we know? What if it could be built from something else entirely? Perhaps it could be based on the strong nuclear force the same force that holds atomic nuclei together. To understand a neutron star, we must first witness the spectacular death of a giant. Our story begins with a star much larger than our sun, perhaps 10 to 20 times its mass. For millions of years, this stellar behemoth lives a brilliant life, fusing hydrogen into helium in its core, and then helium into heavier elements like carbon and oxygen. This process, called nuclear fusion, is a delicate balancing act. The outward push of the energy released from fusion perfectly counters the inward pull of the star's own immense gravity. But this balance cannot last forever. The star is living on borrowed time, its fuel supply dwindling with each passing moment. Eventually, the star's core runs out of fuel to burn. The fusion furnace sputters and dies down. Without the outward pressure from fusion to hold it up, gravity, the relentless force of attraction, takes over. In a fraction of a second, the star's core collapses in on itself with breathtaking violence. The outer layers of the star, now unsupported, come crashing down towards the center at a significant fraction of the speed of light. They slam into the newly formed, ultra-dense core and rebound with unimaginable force. This rebound triggers a cataclysmic explosion we call a supernova, one of the most energetic events in the universe. It is a cosmic firework display that can briefly outshine an entire galaxy. The collapsing core crushes itself into an object of impossible density. The immense pressure of the collapse is so great that it overcomes the forces that keep atoms apart. Electrons are smashed into protons, merging to form neutrons. A star that was once millions of kilometers across is now reduced to a sphere just 20 kilometers in diameter. A city-sized object with the mass of one and a half suns. This is the birth of a neutron star. As if the gravity, temperature, and radiation were not extreme enough, a neutron star possesses another feature of terrifying power, its magnetic field. As the original star's core collapsed, its magnetic field was squeezed into a much smaller area, amplifying its strength to astronomical levels. The magnetic field of a neutron star can be a million billion times stronger than Earth's. This is a force so powerful 
that it dominates the environment around the star, warping the very fabric of space and dictating the behavior of all matter. This colossal magnetic field completely changes the rules of chemistry. On Earth, atoms are spherical, with electrons orbiting the nucleus in cloud-like patterns. In the atmosphere of a neutron star, the magnetic field is so strong that it squashes atoms into long, thin needles. The electrons are no longer free to orbit in three dimensions. They are forced to travel along the magnetic field lines. The atoms themselves become cylindrical, hundreds of times longer than they are wide. In this needle-like state, atoms can bond together in ways that are impossible anywhere else in the universe. They can link up end-to-end, -end, forming long polymer-like chains, all perfectly aligned with the magnetic field. It is possible that the entire plasma atmosphere under the influence of such a field could behave like a single cohesive entity. It might even condense from a gas directly into a solid metallic state, even at millions of degrees. The atmosphere might not be a gas at all, but a strange liquid metal crystal or a solid lattice of atomic needles, its properties dictated entirely by the magnetic field. While the heat would destroy normal molecules, perhaps these magnetically forged polymer chains could provide a new basis for complexity. Could information be stored in the arrangement of these atomic needles? The light in a neutron star's atmosphere is unlike anything we could ever see with our own eyes. The intense heat and energetic particle collisions mean that the star shines brightest in the X-ray and gamma-ray parts of the spectrum. But even this familiar light behaves in strange ways. The powerful gravity bends the path of light so severely that you could, in principle, see the entire surface of the star at once, including the part that is directly behind you. The magnetic field also plays a trick on the light. It causes a phenomenon called vacuum biofringence. This would have the strange effect of splitting a single beam of light into two. Any hypothetical life form existing here would have to perceive a reality that is fundamentally warped. Perhaps such a creature would not see with light at all, but would instead sense the environment through vibrations in the magnetic field. It might be able to feel the subtle fluctuations in its strength, detecting the cosmic rays that strike the star, or the presence of other life forms nearby. Their consciousness would be one of pure physics. It is a world of truly strange light, demanding an equally strange way of seeing. Let us dare to dream. Let us imagine that life has indeed found a way to exist on the surface of a neutron star. What would it look like? How would it behave? Let us call them the chromovores or color eaters, for they would likely feed on the high-energy X-ray radiation that bathes their world. They would be incredibly flat, maybe only a few atoms thick, just to survive the crushing gravity. Imagine, if you will, a vast interconnected network of these atomic needles forming a kind of two-dimensional crystalline entity. This network would be their skeleton, their nervous system and their muscles, all in one. Information would not travel as electrical signals through nerves, but perhaps as vibrational waves or phonons, propagating through the rigid crystal lattice of their bodies. Their thoughts, if we can call them that, would be patterns of vibration. How would such a creature move? To move forward, a chromovore could assemble new polymer chains at its leading edge while disassembling chains at its trailing edge. It would be a slow, creeping form of locomotion like a ripple spreading across a pond. Reproduction for such a being would be equally alien. Instead, a chromovore might simply expand across the surface of the star, growing larger and larger. When it reaches a certain size, it might split into two smaller, independent entities. What would pass for intelligence in such a being? Their crystalline bodies could act as a natural computer, with information stored in the precise arrangement of their atomic structure. Their society, if one could exist, would be unlike anything human. Without individual bodies in our sense, they might form a single planet-spanning consciousness. The entire biome might act as a single coordinated organism. The life of a chromovore would be lived on a timescale that is difficult for us to comprehend. A single thought or action might take only a few microseconds. From our perspective, their entire lives could flash by in the blink of an eye. For decades, our search for extraterrestrial life has been guided by a simple, comforting idea. We've been looking for planets like our own, rocky worlds orbiting their stars at just the right distance. By imagining life on a neutron star, 
we confront the possibility that we are suffering from a profound failure of imagination. The neutron star in its magnificent extremity shatters this mirror. This suggests that there may not be one single type of habitable zone, but many. There could be a habitable zone for carbon-based life like ours, but there might also be a habitable zone for crystalline magnetic life. What is life? Perhaps the best definition is simply this. Life is a system that uses energy to create and preserve information, and which is capable of evolution. Under this broader definition, the medium doesn't matter. It suggests that life might be a fundamental property of matter and energy, a pattern that emerges wherever conditions allow for complexity to arise and sustain itself. It could be a cosmic imperative, not a cosmic accident. It encourages us to think about life as a spectrum of possibilities. The universe may be filled not just with life, but with a whole continuum of emergent complexity. Ultimately, the journey to a neutron star is not just about looking out into the cosmos. It's also about looking back at ourselves. By contemplating the truly alien, we gain a deeper appreciation for the unique and precious nature of life on our own planet. When we understand how incredibly violent and hostile most of the universe is, the tranquility of Earth seems all the more miraculous. Our planet is not just a rock we live on, it's a sanctuary, a fragile garden in an overwhelmingly wild and indifferent universe. Our ability to use the laws of physics to speculate about such extreme possibilities is a testament to the reach of human curiosity and intellect. It shows that even though we are physically confined to our small planet, our minds are free to roam the entire cosmos. Our journey has taken us from the fiery death of a giant star to the bizarre, shimmering surface of its tiny spinning remnant. This exploration serves a profound purpose. It's an exercise in expanding the horizons of what we consider to be possible. It means that the universe could be far richer and more diverse than we've ever dared to imagine. The cosmic stage isn't just filled with rocky planets and gas giants. It's populated by a zoo of exotic objects, each with its own unique physics and chemistry. By asking what if, in the face of such impossible conditions, we perform one of the most vital functions of science, we push at the boundaries of our knowledge, we identify the limits of our current theories and dream about what might lie beyond them. Our speculative journey suggests a universe that is not just filled with inert matter and mindless energy, but one that may have a natural tendency towards complexity and perhaps even towards thought. The universe itself might have the potential to think in a multitude of different languages. We are the way the universe thinks and feels in this particular corner of space-time, but elsewhere, the universe might be thinking in the language of nuclear physics or magnetism or gravity. Our search for extraterrestrial life becomes more than just a search for other creatures. It becomes a search for other ways in which the universe has woken up and become aware of itself. After traveling to the very edge of imagination, we now return home, back to our calm blue world. The contrast could not be more stark. The journey to the neutron star, more than anything else, instills in us a profound appreciation for the sanctuary that is Earth. This renewed appreciation carries with it a sense of responsibility. Knowing how special our world is, how finely tuned the conditions are for our survival, highlights the importance of protecting it. The story of life in the universe is still in its very first chapter. We've only just begun to read the book of the cosmos, and most of its pages remain unturned. The true spirit of exploration lies not in finding the answers we expect, but in having the courage to ask the questions that seem impossible today. And so, our journey ends where it began, under the stars. But we look at them differently now. We see not just points of light, but potential homes for forms of life so strange they would defy our definitions. The neutron star, the silent ghost of a long-dead sun, has taught us that even in the most extreme of cosmic graveyards, the seeds of life might find a way to grow. It reminds us that our search for life is, in the end, a search for the deepest secrets of the universe itself and our own place within its grand and mysterious story.